Nehemiah so he can work through Nehemiah. And God will never work through you until he's first of all worked on you. Help me preach a little while till I feel better. I want to suggest to you today that Nehemiah prays before he participates. He looks before he leaps and he analyzes before he assumes. I want to talk today about analyzing before assuming. Analyzing before assuming. Amen. Need your prayers. For those of us who have been following through this series of sermons from the book of Nehemiah, we recognize Nehemiah gives us some very important insight into how we can get a rebuilding project done even when there is conflict, chaos, and contention. In our study of the book of Nehemiah, we have learned already valuable and insightful principles that we can put into practice whenever we're trying to rebuild a family, a business, a relationship, a career, even a church. And so these memoirs recount how faithful God is to individuals who are faithful to God chairman often says if you take care of God's business God will take care of your business help me preach till I feel better and so we learn valuable lessons on how important it is to use our influence use our time use our gifts use our finances use our skills use our leadership abilities for the work of God it was in the month the writer says in one in one the month of Chislev that the word came unto Nehemiah while he was in Susan, the winter retreat palace of the Persian king, Artaxerxes. The writer says that he receives word from his brother Hananiah that the walls of Jerusalem had been broken down and the gates had been consumed with fire. The problem is this had happened many years before and the walls were still broken down and still consumed with fire. I suggest to you today that you've got to be very careful that you do not allow your concern, your compassion, your consecration to take the place of cautiousness. Nehemiah was concerned. He asked. He was compassionate. He wept. He was also consecrated. He fasted and prayed. But when the Lord allows him to get leave, lumber, and letters, he does not move until God says so. The king gives him everything that he desires, but he doesn't move until he gets clearance from the tower. Nehemiah 2 and 5, there's a submissive plea. Nehemiah 2 and 6, there's a soul persuasion. Nehemiah 2, 7 through 8, there's a solid plan. I suggest to you that those are preaching points. I, don't, I just wanted to drop those. I ain't pushing. Talk with me, somebody. That these are valuable insights into how you and I can get a project off the ground and running even when there's conflict, contention, and chaos all around us. Now, I want to suggest to you today that with God's plan will come God's power. Let me say that again. With God's plan will come God's power. That obstacles come, opposition comes with opportunities. Say it again. Opposition and obstacles come with opportunity. With God's plan comes God's power. God made a way for Nehemiah to receive everything that he needed to get this rebuilding program off the ground. It took four months for this to happen. It's a word that you cannot get caught up to what you see. Because God may be working behind the curtain. I don't hear nobody. I'd have stayed upstairs if I'd known y'all wasn't going to help me. You got to be very careful that you don't get involved with just what you see with your natural eye. God works some stuff behind the curtain. 
You see, God was taking these four months to work on Nehemiah so he can work through Nehemiah. And God will never work through you until he's first of all worked on you. Help me preach a little while till I feel better. I want to suggest to you today that Nehemiah prays before he participates. He looks before he leaps and he analyzes before he assumes. When God's plan came to Nehemiah, Nehemiah was in prayer. Nehemiah simply prayed that the Lord will give what he calls this man. This man, speaking of Artaxerxes, that he would allow this man to give me favor. You see, what I want to suggest to you today, that God will not deal with an apathetic attitude. I, I, better, I better push that pause, rewind, play again. God will not deal with an apathetic attitude. You see, somebody here today, God will have already had you up and running, but your attitude is bad. Make me do it here today. I said your attitude has gotten so bad, God worked in Nehemiah before he worked through Nehemiah. Now, in this day in which we live in, we don't think much of walls. As a matter of fact, we've got our Alarm systems, burglar bars, 357 magnums. I figured I'd get y'all one way or the other. Don't make me drag you this morning. But in that day, the walls of the city showed how much progress, prosperity, and protection any city would have. It was dictated by how large or tall their walls were and how strong the walls of the city were. I suggest to you that Nehemiah knows the condition of the city and he prays. The problem with prayer is you might become the answer to your own prayer. I don't hear nobody. I said you might become the answer to your own prayer. You're telling the Lord, go to the hospital. The Lord might be saying, no, why don't you stop by? There? You say, the Lord, you know, you ought to visit God. I got a child in the jail. You need the Lord to stop by there. The Lord might be saying, no, you go down there. The reality is this morning, you might become the answer to your own prayer. That's why you got to be careful when you pray. God might be opening up a way for you to do what you're praying about. I'm feeling better now. Nehemiah understands broken down walls, burned up gates, but he understands that if there's going to be influence, impact, inspiration in Jerusalem, that he's going to have to be the one. He's been praying that somebody would go. Most of us pray, here am I, send so and so. So he understands that when he gets to Jerusalem, that he's going to be met with a people that have allowed fear and doubt, apathy, insecurity, lack of leadership and frustration to take their eyes off of their potential. Now there's a problem always that when you deal with a program that this massive that Nehemiah is confronted with, that there's always going to be somebody from outside or inside that will try their best to derail you as it relates to your destiny. Tell somebody, don't let nobody detour you from your destiny. Nehemiah saw what they could not see. Nehemiah saw more in the night than they saw in the light. Somebody has suggested that Walt Disney was not able to see the completed project of Disneyland. He died before it was completed. Somebody came by and said, it's a shame that he couldn't see it. Somebody came by and touched him on the shoulder and said, but he did, that's why it's here. I suggest to you that that's vision. Tell somebody that's vision. It's seeing what other people cannot see. It's doing what other people cannot do. It's being motivated by a picture in your mind even before it's on the ground. Is there anybody here thankful that God gives precious vision to those who will allow the vision to be cast within them? Listen, he understands that he's going to have to deal with people who are frustrated, people who are doubtful, people who are insecure, people who understand the load that it will take. They've got a lot of difficulties. They've got questions. Where will the brick come from? Where will the gates come from? Where will the mortar come from? And Nehemiah does what David did. My brothers and sisters, when he got ready to die, he took care of all of that up front. 
Because sometimes you got to give the answer to the question that you ask. Talk with me, somebody. Sometimes you got to provide the material for people to work with because you recognize that what they're going to do is make all kinds of excuses why they can't do it. Somebody say, well, I ain't got no money here. Where we gonna, where we gonna get the brick from? It, where's the lumber? Truck is coming in, right? right j- just stand right here. Sometimes you got to provide the answer to people's problems before they even pose it as a problem. Now, not, watch what Nehemiah does. Nehemiah gets leave, he gets letter, he gets lumber. He gets all of that. Because he recognizes that when he gets to Jerusalem, those will be the things that will be of concern. Notice what he does. He gets to Jerusalem and the word says he gets there and gets on his beast by night. He sees more in the night than they did in the light. I suggest to you that here Nehemiah is circling the city, making sure he's come in, it is believed, from the south. Now he gets to see the city in totality from the north. Here he is on his beast, making his rounds, going through the city, making sure that it was just as he had heard it was. Here is the principle. You've got to watch who you listen to. Make me do it here today. You got to watch who you listen to because there are some people who might appear credible who want you to think that they know more than what they really know. They've been way up here and it got to look like they still up here when the Lord done brought them way down here. Make me do it here today. I want to suggest to you that Nehemiah does this. He goes to Jerusalem. He doesn't depend on the report that he's received from his brother Hananiah. That the place was in ruin and the people were in reproach. He doesn't even deal with that. The writer declares he gets on his own beast by night, goes and surveys the the dragon gate, the king's pool and all of that. And notice what the text says. The text says he doesn't tell anybody what was going on. He did what the old folks said. He mused it in his heart. You see, God is looking for people. Who will not watch things happen, but will make things happen. Yeah, I better say that again. That didn't get you like I thought it should have. God is waiting for people that will not watch things happen, but will make things happen. Now, now, now what was the prayer? The prayer was simply that the Lord would touch the heart. Of the king Artaxerxes that he might present him with favor not fame not fortune not finances favor I suggest to you today that you need favor I said you need the favor of God when you got the favor of God it doesn't make any difference how many people are against you I hear the Lord say if I'm for you I'm more than the whole world against you And it makes no difference how many people are against you when God is for you. 